Okay, hi, welcome to the Dylan Rounds case. This video could arguably be the deepest one yet, covering all kinds of angles, timelines, such rich depth and data, okay? Credit, first of all, to Quinton, who provided me with this timeline, creating it himself, piecing it together, okay? He allowed me to share it with you. Um, if there's like links that need to be shared afterwards, maybe we can work that out, but I'm just reading this out to you now so you get an overall picture. I want to issue something very important right now if you're here. It might be a lot to take in, okay? It definitely will be a lot for me to take in so I might not be able to analyze everything but even if it's just reading it out maybe you can make sense of it yourself and if down the line in the future we need to dissect this entire piece page by page whatever it may be we can do so okay also welcome if you're in the live chat at this moment in time I appreciate it feel free to share your own opinions and thoughts down below as we go along okay and also shout out to King Salmon, also known as King Samoan, uh, Cleo, and maybe someone else in the last live video premiere for their super chat, like Relentless. It was very good of them. Okay, so and also I'll, I'll do like a I'll do like a community members post thing, just inquiring about another video. Okay, so it's all under control. I think everything's all on screen right now. Can't go in full, full screen j just because it might spaz out, okay? So you see it here. This is what it looks like. Quick run through of the keys top left. It says in purple, completed. In, you call it orange, checking. Yellow, new information. Um, burgundy, not true. Red, red flag. I assume red flag means... Um, a lie, something not quite adding up, something dodgy, that's what I assume. Um, and yeah, we'll just go for it, okay? So, first of all, we've got some dates at the top here. Hopefully you can follow my little marker, it's got a plus symbol on. I'll just wiggle it around on the left-hand side of the screen. Feel free to follow my cursor, as it will guide you what we're talking about, okay? You will see text slightly hidden and not complete but if I double click on it it will reveal itself so that's all under control okay so at the top left hand side we've got some dates there with question marks so they're still being checked as we speak by Quinton I guess also take in mind Quinton did share this with Candice Cooley in recent time and she didn't respond and she didn't say thank you so that's quite interesting that because a lot of effort has gone behind this right so let's just read the first bit of info out. You see, when I double click, you see it. If you can't quite read it, don't worry, I'll read it to you. And if you want to read it along, just follow my marker. You see up here, the black box, it's got like the text there. If you don't know where I'm pointing to, it's where it says it's under the product notice yellowish tab, like sand color. Below it, there's a box and it's got all the text underneath okay so you can follow it as we go along okay so it says ty corbin met troy wadsworth in utah years ago troy has beaten the shit out of a lot of women in the past troy beat lionel's mom his son and tracy his ex-wife when he was living in his motorhome in utah ty corbin on um, no thanks the 30th of the 6th. So that's the date for that. 30th of the 6th. And I assume that's 2022. Now, who is Tracy? I assume Tracy is, let me just get this right, Chase Venstra's ex wife. Okay, hopefully I've got that correct. There will be names that pop up here you may have never heard of. Don't worry. I'm sure they can be explained later in this video in the chat by other people or I believe maybe lower down further down there's a few pages which might explain who is who so you don't have to get too like worked up if you can't understand it because it's just 
reading this out and then we can go back over it in time okay right the next piece it says Aaron Aaron Wadsworth okay used to live in Montello for one year Kurt told him not to be friends with Robert Aviles or his friends Aaron didn't listen and Rob used to visit one day Rob and his mom robbed Aaron when no one was home Rob's mum stood guard outside whilst Robert stole video games. Neighbour witnessed it and told Kurt, and Kurt told Aaron, Kurt Wadsworth on Salty, 19th of the 7th. Alicia, Aaron and Ty were taking drugs when Aaron was staying in Montello. In brackets, Taylina Rigolot on, Sa Sa on Salty, the 7th of the 8th. Okay, right, so... We've heard of Aaron previously in the past where he was done for the that, that drugs paraphernalia. I think that was in Idaho, if I'm correct, with the police raid and his friend. But you see, you know, he's got kind of like a past history with getting into the wrong crowd of people, in a, in a sense, from the looks of it. Uh, Robert Avila stealing stuff, that's no surprise because we've heard that he's got a past history with burglaries and it is shown here. And it says neighbor witnessed it and told Kurt. So you've got like you've got neighbors looking out for one another. Um, you know, eagle eyes. If one person's not there, someone else will be. So you got to take that in mind. Okay, interesting. Uh, where are we on now? There we go. It says Aaron slept with Ellen Berg years when she owned Saddle Saw Bar, and Aaron was doing work there. In brackets, Taylina on um, Jav. I assume they mean uh, Zav Girl, 18th of the 7th. Ellen Berg said Aaron had five kids at the time. Unknown what channel Ellen was on at the time of saying that. Aaron also slept with Mrs. Berg, Kurt and Jim Terry on Salty's panel, the 28th of the 8th month. I assume. Okay. So, uh, no disrespect to Ellen. I mean, people ha other people have highlighted it, saying Ellen has been known to go from one person to another. Whatever happens, happens. Okay. I guess it's just like an example of Aaron. Um, but, y you know, it, it's kind of like one of those things where when you get these smaller communities, people are a bit closer to one another, all kinds of things happen. You know what I'm saying? Okay, what's the next one? It says, Dylan's ex, Alicia's brother, committed suicide after molesting Kurt's niece. Alicia used to date Dylan when Dylan ran the bar. Dylan Berg on, um, no thanks, 29 for the 6. Dylan Berg, I've never heard of that name before. But it's a thing, Dylan Berg. Uh, like Ellenberg, I guess. Okay, so they're not talking about Dylan Rounds there. They're talking about a different Dylan from the looks of it. Okay. Dylan's ex, Alicia's brother, committed suicide after doing something. Okay. So we're seeing, like, indecent behaviour, which kind of summarises it from, like, the crime reports we've heard of. The next bit of info says, Kurt Wadsworth... John Gregory and another man were in a hot tub together. John Gregory is passed now. Alicia and Jim on Zav Girl. Okay, 24th to 6. I don't know if that's talking about like a gay moment or not. Ty and his son went to go cut a tree down for Kurt. Whilst they were cutting tree, they witnessed Aaron and Kurt get into a big fight behind Saddle Saw about Kurt being gay. Aaron was also very upset with Kurt tie on um, no thanks for the seventh okay so why why would Kurt be getting angry right um well they were cutting tree Aaron and Kurt about Kurt being gay maybe maybe Kurt because of the age of him coming out at this time and I don't know he's is he embarrassed or is he showing resistance because, say, he doesn't want other people to know or uh, change how they look at him, maybe? Um, it says, Becky's son knocked Kurt out cold one night with one punch in front of Saddle Saw. 
tie from on no thanks 22nd of the 7th wonder what this was about did Kurt try and make a move on him that's a point made by Quinton you never know Becky's son knocked Kurt out cold yeah because if Kurt is gay and comes across Becky's son Kurt might have tried you know kissing the son and he's like oh hell no I'm not that sort of guy and then fought back you never know and if that's the case, if Kurt is known for making moves on people, did he ever try it on Dylan, right? And could it have come to that point where it backfired? And on that occasion, Kurt did retaliate in some way or some grudge began to form. Because if Becky's son knocked Kurt out, I mean, what's Kurt going to think? Is he going to get more angry because it's in front of people? Does he appear weak? Does he not like that? You know, interesting. It also says after, hunting club guy who's friends with Kurt's sister as well as cattle rancher all came across people out in the desert late at night. Jim Terry and Candice Cooley on Sleuth Mom's channel, 20 of 6. Kurt's sister is Cherise. Is this the homeless guy staying on Kevin Bibbin's property that used to be mad if no one gave him a lift? That's a point made by Quinton. Hunting club. Now, with the hunting club, has that got things to do with the... Um, oh, what's it called now? I forgot. There was like a ranch. There was a ranch north of Montello, but I forgot what it was called. And it was that conservation area as well. You'll know what I'm talking about. And they've got a hunting club there because of the hierarchy and stuff. I can't remember the name, but I did cover it in a previous video. So they were all in the desert at night. A little bit dodgy. Hmm. This is what I mean. Nighttime activity. You remember what I was saying in a previous video? Yeah, interesting. Also, take in mind, at some other point, I might go over this and I might be able to do map analysis of singular events and actually break it down visually. So whilst this is all text-based and there's a lot to take in, I can do a map analysis of certain events and give my own thoughts and opinions. Does that make sense to you? If that was the case, there's a, a fair chance that it would open up many, 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 many videos for me to cover, i.e. map analysis, because I can tell stories better give my thoughts and opinions sharper when I'm on the maps for whatever reason, okay? So, it is quite positive, this, okay? What's the next point? Um, is this to do with 2000? It looks like it. So, in 2000, it says Chase has daughter with first woman. Chase's daughter's name is Chaney, and she is now 22 years old. That makes sense, because at the time, 2022, when this would have been made, born 2000, you know, like my age. So, yeah, in brackets, Chase's dad on um, No Thanks, 4th the 8th, okay? 2002, uh, the 8th of the first month, I assume that's correct, it's just because... Take in mind the dates are backwards when it comes to bloody America. That pisses me off in a way. But yeah, the dates are just reversed. So in 2002, Dylan was born. Go across. It says Idaho, Montello. Okay. We'll leave the far right part out for now. We'll just go through the text itself. Oh, what's happened here? I don't think it liked it when I clicked that. Where are we? Um, we're there, aren't we? 2006, Ellen Berg moves to Montello. Ellen on um, No Thanks, 29 for the 6. So I guess that's when it was talked about, but Ellen Berg moved to Montello in 2006. There come. What's this one? Oh boy, this is a long one. Hold on. So this is 2007. Watson's aka Area 52 or I am at Area 52 Pilot Valley is the third bar it's been operating since 2007 and not licensed Dylan Berg said 
He's going to get killed for mention, mentioning it, but says it's time to clean up the town. In brackets, Dillenberg on mm, no thanks, 29 for the 6. Apparently, pub is still running. Annie runs it on her property and where all the tweakers hang out. Annie's property is believed to be around Tacoma or Pilot Valley. This bar needs to be checked and people questioned. By Quinton. I am my area. Okay. Fair enough. So this is what I mean. Whilst the focus has been on Saddle Saw Bar and maybe Cowboy Bar and Grill, with the other bars nearby or further away, depending on who goes there and hangs out, maybe there's been secret discussions with time about the case, or even leading up to it, like there was some kind of secret plan going on, or maybe some kind of um, get-together afterwards to discuss, you know, what to do next. You never know, because when you get these smaller you know, little communities, little hangouts, you never know what goes on there. And we've not really men we've not seen it mentioned anywhere else, Area 52. Now, yes, a map analysis could be important about this point, but what I will say is it is hard to find on the maps because it isn't an official place, okay? Also, with it saying not licensed either, okay, you're not going to get all the recommendations and um, reviews and stuff online, etc. So it's a bit more obscure to find so let me just click that off my god there's so much here isn't there right so this is 2009 it says candice cooley was involved in plenty money laundering all her life eric drees candice cooley embezzled plenty of money from justin's trucking company justin was upset and tried to run her over and got arrested Candice Cooley apparently owes more than $2.6 million. Candice also drank a lot. Candice is an atheist and Justin's a Mormon. In brackets, Candice ex fiance with Jim Terry on mm, No Thanks, Fed the Seventh. So I guess that's when that was mentioned. Interesting. I mean, we have heard it before, the rough discussion briefly about Candy's money embezzlement, but it wasn't really mentioned in depth. But you see an example here, 2.6 million owed, and Justin reacted badly to it. So, when was this? 2009. Did this play any role with the divorce before or after? Could that have impacted their actions and reactions, possibly? Seems a little bit toxic in a sense. I'm just reading this out, okay? So if people have counterpoints, counterarguments, feel free to do so, okay? Also, take in mind just above the one what we read about Area 52, that's highlighted as a red flag. So that's definitely like a, a focus point of interest, which probably should be analysed further down the line, okay? Okay. So Candice being an atheist... Would that impact her outlook on Dylan being gay or not? you got Justin being a Mormon, so would it be Justin who um, might be a little bit negative towards Dylan being gay? Just like a little highlight, you know, I just wanted to point out. Okay. Right. Click on this one. This is 2011. It says Ty Corbin was going out with Michaela. Costanzo mom for years before he met Phyllis and helped her bring up her kids which they eventually split up after many years. Michaela Costanzo, 16 years of age, was later kidnapped from school and murdered. They searched for four to five days looking for her. Ty Corbin said he knew what it was like and knew what Justin is going through and reason why Ty is helping look for Dylan. And that was Ty on Jim Terry's channel, 28th of the 9th. So, yes, I do remember that. I do. Um, and it was like, there was a backstory. And it wasn't, I wasn't sure of it at the time. But it did feel like there was like a, a boost behind Ty and his motivation, you know, to be successful this time. So, yeah, Ty was going out with Mikhail, Mikhail Constanzo's mum before he met Phyllis. And helped bring up her kids. Right, so Ty wasn't the... Like, actual father but you know he kind of stepped in to be like the father so that's why he felt close and that's why it impacted him in that sense okay what's this one 
2012. Kurt has rented the bar from Ellen since 2012. Ellenberg on mm, no thanks. 19th of the 7th. 2012. It says when Kurt first came back to Montello, Kurt took a whole lot of school kids out to some water park in town and tried to book them into a motel for the night. Parents were upset and drove to fetch their kids. Ty Corbin on Jim Terry, 28th of the 9th. Right. So you can kind of understand why the parents would be a bit upset because it's like, mm, why are you taking matters into your own hands? Was that was that the original plan? Maybe not. So the way you could interpret this is was Kurt trying to do something to those school people? You know what I'm saying? Could get very twisted. Though it didn't happen. But if it did, and they did have a sleepover there at the hotel, motel, mm, could have got a bit messy, being realistic. Okay. 2012, it says, Dylan Berg was almost shot by a vigilante group whilst collecting arrowheads. Dylan said in, two, in 2022, there are still things going on and Saddle Saw is down the street. And that was Dylan Rounds on um, No Thanks 19 for the 7th. Okay. So, yeah, we've heard it about the vigilante group and stuff. I don't know why Dylan Berg was like, shot at when collecting arrowheads. You know, uh, was it, did he do something else wrong? Was he not supposed to be there? I don't know. 2012, it says Kurt Wadsworth, one son, was staying in Montello, in brackets, Dustin on Queen Bee's channel, 20th of the 9th. In 2013, it says Ron Cully's phones the police and says two guys and a woman came into his place and hit John Hughes in the head whilst he was working on travel trailer tied him up and took off with him in a black car. Lady was driving. It all happened within two minutes. Ron asked Troy to phone the police and after a while he says did he phone the police and Kurt says no. Ron phones the LE and they finally get there to take report. Tracy is mentioned in the background and Ron sounds like he's recently moved into town. Later finds out that they were actually bounty hunters, in brackets, Chris on the mob crew, 17th of the 17th. Okay, bounty hunters, that's the first time I've heard of that, you know, not heard those people mentioned. Ron Cully, two guys and a woman came into his place. So it's like a kidnapping, in a way. Uh, does it say anything about him being returned back? I don't know. Right, well, wow. Okay. Next one, this is 2013, the 8th month, the 20th day. Laurie Engel used to live in West Wendover and was the manager at the Montego Bay Casino eight to nine years ago, in brackets, 2013 to 2014. Laurie now lives 38 miles out of Christ, Utah. She says Kurt used to come there straight once per month in normal clothing and once he was in Wendover he used to cross dress and then seen at casinos with makeup on wig heels dress and no glasses she couldn't tell if he's a guy but noticed his voice he would hang out at the bar and pay slot play slots there was two guys that cross dressed and frequented the casinos Laurie Engel and on the shack lady, 11th of the 10th. Lady didn't seem 100%. It was Kurt by Quinton. So it's not 100% confirmed, but, you know, with all these different reports of um, Kurt doing this and that, dressing up as this, then it does make you question. And the whole talk about casinos, right? We've heard about it. Like, does, does it, like, this whole casino thing influence Kurt in having those slot machines of his own in his bar, Saddle Saw, maybe? I don't know, to try and make a little bit of extra money, I guess. Um, mm. And also, we've heard about the casino with Ellenberg and Candy's Cooley, but we won't go into too much depth because it might it might be mentioned here later on. Okay. Right. So, what else do we have? Twenty fourteen, the eleventh month, I think. 
Ty Corbin was in Montello doing washing a few years back before weed was legal. Whole lot of police raided them and ran Ty's weapon and was stolen. Ty Corbin said he bought from John McReynolds across the road. Police didn't do anything or arrest him. In brackets, Ty on mm, no thanks, 30 of the 6. Ty later changes surname, in brackets, by Quinton. John McGregor, um, inappropriately, you know, to a, a younger person, girl in Montello. Why did Elko let RSO work a fire deputy? Ty on Jim Terry, 28th for the 9th. So, yeah, we've heard about the poor treatment and, you know, inappropriate stuff going on with um, females in Montello at different points in time. And that was 2014. So, even back then, there seems to be bad stuff going on, right? Hmm. Just make sure I've not missed anything. Okay, no more, no red flags at the moment. That's popping up. Um, yeah, okay. Right, okay. Oh, why does it keep doing that? That's so annoying. Let me just uh, try and find where I was at. Sorry. 2014, and this is the 11th, is it? Oh, I've already read that one. It's that one, isn't it? Will it? Let me click it. There we go. Apologies. This is 2015 now. 2015, the 1st of January, the 28th day. John McReynolds, two months later, inappropriately did it again to a girl in Montello, got caught and was arrested. In brackets, Ty, on um, no thanks, 30 of the 6. Ty later changed his surname. Oh, I thought I read that. Oh, is it, it's just because it's like repeating on itself. Some These like tabs are fucking uh, confusing. Anyway, 2015, on the 5th month, 29th day, Scott C. Wadsworth appeals from the district court's restitution order imposed after he was convicted of and sentenced for sexual exploitation of a younger person, unlawful activity with a younger person, and enticing a young person over the internet. We remember that, we've looked into that in a previous article in 2015, they were about 14 or 15 years of age, uh, May 29th, in brackets, documents, Scott you know, did what he did to a younger person in Utah. Scott was running from law and Wadsworths were hiding him in Montello for seven years. Scott brought a woman, Robin, with him to Montello. Ty on Jim Terry's 28th of the 9th. So what we're seeing here is that you got the Wadsworths covering for one another from the looks of it, I guess. Um, so if there was whatever reason for a Wadsworth to have been involved in the Dylan Rounds case, then they probably would have covered for him once again. Not Scott, but maybe Troy, maybe uh, Kurt, maybe someone else, maybe Aaron, you know, anyone within the family, right? You never know. Okay. Let me just make sure I've not missed anything. Okay, there we go. So 2015, the 11th month, says Dylan Berg said he had a house a few years ago running on propane. He went to Kurt's trailer one evening and when Kurt opened the door, he had red lips. Dylan said a lot more happened but couldn't speak about it on air. In brackets, Dylan Berg on no thanks, 19th of the 7th. Alicia said she went out with Dylan Berg and Dylan told her that when he went to see Kurt at his trailer Kurt was wearing red lipstick this was six to seven years back before Dylan rounds went missing Alicia and Jim Terry on Zav girls channel 24 to 6 okay um, okay getting up to his dodgy stuff again I guess okay um, where are we now this one 2017, the 7th of the 11th, okay. William Kremer, in brackets, Buffalo Bill. What the hell? When floods happened. Ah, yeah, the 2017 floods. Yeah, the, this is the photos. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. 
these, you remember when we looked at that that wash on Google Earth and you saw all the water, you saw the railway track destroyed, you saw the land flooded, you remember that? Some of you will, if you can refer back to it on one of my previous videos when we looked at the wash, okay? 2017 it occurred. So Bill was trying to shoot at Phyllis's house. Ty came home, grabbed his rifle and shot above him to scare him. Bill called Ellie and Stevens came out and arrested Ty first, then later Bill. Ty later found out Stevens arrested him because of Montello Water Project. Okay, in brackets, Ty on mm, no thanks, 8th to 7th, happened in 2017 on the 7th month, the 11th day by Quinton. Point made. Okay. So we're seeing quite a few different names popping up. We're seeing a lot of crimes, a lot of activity, a lot of grudges. Okay, so it is kind of messy, this. Okay. What's this? 2019, this is. Laurie Engel, her again, says she met Dylan a few times three years or so back. Laurie's son-in-law goes to Montello a lot from West Wendover. His younger stepbrother was very good friends of Dylan's. He knew Dylan from college in West Wendover and Logan. During this time, Laurie spoke to Dylan twice, but she knows about Dylan since he was three years old. Laurie Engel on Shack Lady, the 11th of the 10th. I assume when they're saying Dylan, they mean Dylan Rounds, because look at the spelling, because I'm sure earlier on, when they were talking about Dylan Berg, that was D-I-L-L-A-N. Dylan Berg, Dylan Rounds is spelled D-Y-L-A-N, okay? So thank God the names are spelled differently so we don't get mixed up. That That is a positive, that. Now it's 2019. So we're, we're seeing the emergence of Dylan Rounds now because you've got to take in mind it was only like three or four years back when uh, Dylan's, you know, came into the mix of Lucen and Montello because of the whole farming thing, you remember? Let's move on. Click there. So this one, 2019 again. Ty Corbin asked Kurt Wadsworth to dig two to three holes for underground greenhouses to grow weed. In brackets, Kurt Wadsworth on Salty, 19th to 7th. This sounds like same underground bunkers that Ellen Berg mentioned about Kurt having them. Made a point by Quinton. Slash... Ty says the sheriffs have checked out Kurt's underground bunkers. Ty on mm, no thanks, 7th or the 8th, will have to be confirmed. Okay, so that's still ongoing, I guess. So Ty asked Kurt to dig for underground greenhouse. Okay. I mean, we've heard about it uh, just in general, about, you know, the drug production, drug usage, meth labs. They're not, they might not be on the surface level, so you don't see them, but they might be dug underneath underground when pancakes were speaking to ty at the time for the first time when they first met up montello and pancake said where are they and uh, ty was kind of like saying well yeah they're they're out there somewhere and stuff you know well there you go this is like an example of it different type of drug them from the looks of it again but yeah if there is people digging stuff out there making bunkers you know you can reinforce it with kurt but the bit about what it's saying about police checked the bunker. I mean, if that truly was the case, have they really found anything? Doesn't seem like it. Unless the police did find something in Kurt's bunker, but because they're a bit dodgy, they're not going to do anything about it, maybe. What's this? 2019. Ty moves out to Wells with Phyllis. Kurt Wadsworth on Salty Pancakes Channel 19th to 7th. Okay. What have we got here? 2019. Chase was part of a group in Salt Lake City before he moved to Montello. Brenner was apparently also part of the group. In brackets, Taylina Wadsworth on Salty, 7th the 8th, slash Brenner and Chase are friends. In brackets, Lady in chat on Salty's channel, 19th of the 12th. Okay. So, you've seen previously in the past, there's been like these like groups, associations, um, joining up with one another doing things just like what we see on youtube with the youtubers and stuff uh, being invited on different panels and stuff now uh, we're seeing it with the people directly in the case from back then 
Next piece, 2019. We'll just scroll down so we don't lose our way. Let's do it about there. Okay. It says Chase moves to Montello two to three years before Dylan went missing and works and stays with lady doing repair work. In brackets, local anonymous lady on no thanks, the 15th of the 7th. Chase did work for a lady on Pilot Road, didn't finish his work there and took her quads. Ty on mm, no thanks mentioned that the 22nd of the 7th. Is this Lady Diddy? In brackets, Kurt mentions to Salty on Salty's channel, 31st of the 7th. Chase moves to Montello, wanted two years prior to Dylan going missing, but travels backwards and forwards to Ogden. Ty on mm, no thanks mentioned that. Also, Candice Cooley mentioned that as well, saying he would move back and forth. One to two years is incorrect, made by Quinton. Slash Candy says Dylan went out there three years ago. In brackets, Candy's on mm, no thanks, 15th and the 9th. Okay, so quite a bit of information there. Um, repair work. Okay, Chase. But he stole the quads, which isn't a surprise, right? I mean, you kind of expect that from Chase to do something like that. A little bit of criminal activity going on there, I guess you could call it. Um, where are we at now? This one. 2019, the 8th, the 9th, Friday. Sarah Bailey found dead on side of the freeway. Ty and people with him found her laying on the side of the freeway with a bullet hole in her head. Elko said it was suicide, but Ty doesn't believe so. In brackets, Ty on mm, no thanks, 9th to 7th. Woman found dead in desert, believed to have committed suicide. Don't know much on that. Supposedly three years ago, in brackets, Brookie and Kim on Tyler Feller's channel, 24th to 7th. Not sure where this was, but was in the same time frame as Dylan's. Only found Sarah Gallagher, 2011, March 20th. Okay. So, Sarah Bailey. Okay. Um... Another woman found dead in the desert, which is a bit odd, right? Three years ago. Hmm. Okay. Same time frame as Dylan's. Time frame. How can it be if it says 2011? Weird. But when you start hearing about other people going missing, that's strange. When you hear about other people being found dead in a similar area or nearby to like where Dylan went missing, it does start becoming a little bit odd quite strange right thinking what the hell's going on out there like um, um, is it like a serial killer or something out there let's read the next bit wade shop holds three women hostage one of the ladies was troy wadsworth's ex in brackets by taylina rigulot on salty's panel seventh of the eighth Salty goes past Troy's ex and says her name's Tracy. Brackets, Kurt, Salty, Ellen, Modest Man, Glor and Dylan and Dylan Berg on Salty's panel, 23rd to the 8th. Says, Wade Shup holds a woman hostage, later holds another two up and takes advantage of them in an inappropriate way. One escaped and went for help, and Wade got arrested 9th of August 2019. Wade lived close to Kurt's place in Montello. Brackets, Troy's neighbour's daughter on mm, no thanks, 31st of the 8th. Okay, that's a lot to take in. So we're already seeing, back then, hostage situations. I don't know if Kurt maybe tried, you know, recreating another scene like that later on with, you know, that tip about Avales and uh, Venstra. But we're seeing, it's kind of like back and forth, right? you got an X here, you got an X there, this person being held hostage, that person shooting that person up, that person getting kidnapped. Like, God, there's a lot going on in a small place, right? Yeah. And uh, in a, a lot of inappropriate stuff too. What's this? 2020. It says, Troy gets divorced to Tracy two years before Dylan went missing. Leaves town a while after then comes back. 
Tracy lives off Charisse. Ta Tay Lena doesn't like Tracy because she's always trying to get Kurt out the bar so she can take it over. In brackets, Tay Lena on Salty's panel, 22nd of the 9th. Okay. Two years before Dylan missing. Okay. Troy gets divorced to Tracy. So it's like passing around the people as well from the looks of it. So, hmm. Let's move on. 2020. Dylan moves to Lucin to start farming. Here we go. He did work for other people until he could find a farm to buy. In brackets, talked about by Kurt Wadsworth on Crime Time with Jess, 30th of the 6th. Okay. Interesting. 2020. Dan Iverson buys Bar O Ranch. In brackets. Troy's neighbour's daughter on um, No Thanks, first of the ninth. 2020, Kurt met Dylan through Ed Harshberger. Ed owned, Ed owned the Dylan's farm before Dylan bought it. So Ed Harshberger, okay. In brackets, mentioned by Jess on Crime Time with Jess, 30 of the six. Not true, Kurt corrects Jess, slash... Ed was leasing property from John Sheldon, and Joseph Chachio was wanting to buy it. In brackets, Kurt on Crime Time with Jess, 36. Okay. So from the looks of it, you, we're reading the information as we go along, and then the bit where it says not correct or actually true, that's more on the far right-hand side, so that's like giving an update, a counterpoint, or reinforcing it. Okay? So it's like, Possible rumours and actual information, and then on the far hand right side, additional points made to um, update the um, legitimacy of it. Okay. Right. Um, well, at the moment, with some of these names, yeah, Ed Harshberger, we've heard him now a few times. Um, Kurt Dillon, yeah. Okay. Just want to take it in because there's a lot to get through. Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to get through all of this right today. Oh my god, there is so much to read. I've just noticed on the bar. I'm still on page one. There's 16 more pages to go through and we've not even gone to the second page. <laughs> if we can at least get page one done, then that's a victory in itself, I think. Okay. 2020. Ed Harshberger was leasing property from John Sheldon and Joseph Chichio was wanting to buy it. Um, okay. Uh, and that was on Kurt on Crime Time with Jess, 30 of the 6. Dylan and Ed worked for the same guy that used to own Dylan's property on Dylan's farm before he bought it. Don worked for owner of Grain Shed Property. That's by Taylina, regular on Zav Girl, 18th to 17th. Taylina is incorrect, as Kurt says different, made by Quinton. Candy says Dylan never worked for Ed. Candy's on mm, No Thanks, 15th to the 9th. So what you're seeing, you're seeing opposing information back and forth, right? So uh, just take that into mind as we go along. we do that one? No, we didn't. 2020, Tom and Ed were good friends and visited Ed's place by Bald Eagle Mountain often. That was made by Kurt and Salty, 24th to the 11th. Dylan was working for another guy. Dylan was hired as a handyman. There were 15 Mexicans working with him and two had their own motorhomes when Dylan was 17. Point made by Kurt on Salty's channel, 21st of the 7th. Okay. Troy's neighbour's daughter says Ed doesn't live in Montello anymore and hasn't seen Ed for years. Ed lives out of town in Arizona, another state. Troy's neighbour's daughter said it on Salty's panel, 30th of the 8th. Others say that Ed is not the type of guy to kill someone. Kurt Wadsworth mentioned that on Salty's 2nd of the 9th, slash Ed left Montello two years ago in 2020, mentioned by Taylina Rigolot on Salty's panel, 2nd of the 9th. 
Ed Harshberger liked Dylan. Ed wasn't in the area at the time. Mentioned by Candice on No Thanks, 15th of the 9th. Okay. Ed Harshberger liking Dylan. I guess because of the mentality, the work ethic, right? But he wasn't in the area at the time, so I guess that rules him out. And other people are saying he's not likely to kill people. So, I guess that seems to rule out Ed, like, as a suspect, up to now at least. Okay. Right. What next? Mm -hmm. This one. 2020. Michael Moore moves to Lucin, and neighbours around Lucin and Lion Mountain all have a theft outbreak and some cars stolen. They suspect Chase and Avales involved. Okay, mentioned by Michael Moore, Tyler Fellows Channel, 7th of the 7th. Okay. Yeah, we've seen some key names now. Robert Aviles gets arrested for breaking into Red Line Hotel offices in Elko and stealing master key to the guest rooms and entering them. Point made by Frankie Rose's crime update, 7th of the 7th. Okay. 2020, Don was helping Dylan in 2020 and the tractor went off in circles, driving over Don a few times. Don was injured, so the granddad looked after Don for a while, taking him for medical checkups. Yeah, mentioned by Candice Cooley on Heavy D, 17th of the 10th. We did see that, we did cover it, and I saw it too. So I do relate to that one. What's this one? 2020. Um, Annie Frederick said, I'll leave it to my good boy Adam to point me out at the end of my shift that I had a different pair of shoes on. Made Point made by Annie Fredericks on Facebook. Annie works at Area 52 Bar, remember that. Annie Fredericks on Facebook. Mentioned 20th of the 12th, 2020. Slash Adam obviously works at Annie's Bar, or is related to Annie. Okay. So, like, these people may need to be questioned at one point, right? Okay. 2020, the 11th. Someone phoned Jim to say his motorhome has just been blown up. That's to do with Jim Brenner, okay? In Montello. Kurt felt sorry for Jim Brenner and let him stay in his motorhome with him for a, for a year. Okay, that fills in that blank spot. In brackets, Taylina mentioned it on Zav Girl's channel, 18 for the 7th. Kurt and Brenner lived together for one year after Brenner's home was blown up. Brenner moved to Kurt's to stay with him. Kurt was with on Salty, 19th and 7th. Was Kurt having a relationship with Brenner? And Brenner was jealous, thinking because Dylan staying by Kurt must have been in relationship with Kurt. So what? Did Brenner maybe take Dylan out so then uh, there was no one in the way in between? Like, if... <laughs> It's a bit deep, but Brenner wanted Kurt, but Brenner thought Dylan was with Kurt, then, you know, you've got to take the middle person out, right? Eliminate them. So that's a, another alternative motive, which hasn't really been looked at before, like on my channel at least, behind that. Hmm, interesting. What else do we have? Oh, did we, did we, oh, did we just skip one? Apologies about that. Hmm... Sorry, just give me a second. I don't think I read this one out. Dom was helping Dylan in 2020. Yeah, we've seen that one. We saw that one. Uh, I must have missed one out. Apologies about that. It's just because it's hard to read them all. Just going backwards slightly. It says Brenner was living in Montello on his farm in his motorhome. He had issues with his pickup and he had to leave it down the road from his motorhome we've seen that on google earth you see that like bluish vehicle parked in that ditch because he obviously can't get up the slope and we documented that on google earth 2019 imagery at his original place in montello brenner's so that's interesting he could see it but later in day someone took his generators out the back he shot in the air to chase them away the next day, he told everyone in Montello what happened. Someone phoned Jim to say his motorhome had just been blown up. Kurt felt sorry for Jim 
and let him stay in his motorhome with him for a few years. Yep. Made, point made by Taylina on Zavgirl's 18th of the 7th. Brenner was living on his farm by his motorhome and had to park his... Oh, has this been repeated? Someone tried to rob him, but left the... Oh, okay. It sounds like it's a bit repeated. Someone tried to rob his pickup and he tried to shoot them. When Brenner went into Montello, he left the coal stove burning. The guys came back when Brenner wasn't there and shot his motorhome and propane tanks, which blew his motorhome up and it burnt to the ground. Kurt offered Brenner to stay with him. Um, yeah. House blew up day after his car was robbed close to his farm. Chase and Rob believed to be involved in robbing pickup. Point by Ty Corbin. Sam from Fire Department and Ellen was called to say Brenner's motown was burning. Sam called Brenner and Brenner was in Ogden and safe. Brenner was concerned about his chickens, quad, motorhome and paperwork. Sam on Salty. Okay. So, it's a mixture between accidental, the trailer blowing up, and also with intent. Brenner did it by accident. The other guys that came back trying to rob the place and cause it to blow up in the end by shooting at it. So that is interesting. That mm. so was it like a grudge? Whoever did it, was it like planned? Um, did they have it in for Brenner? I mean, you know, if Brenner's done his own share of crimes and stuff, it could have pissed some people off with time, right? Yeah. What's this one? 2020. Someone phoned Jim to say his motorhome had just been blown. Oh, yeah, we saw that one. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I just missed one before. That's why I returned back to it. Apologies. 2021, the 1st of January, I think. Lance and Kimber on Earthworm and Infotainment move out to Montello around this time. Mentioned by Lance on Salty Pancakes panel 17th to 8th. Lance was accused of doing something to a, uh, a younger person in the town they came from. The mother found out and told people then they left the town. There was also criminals after Lance. Point made by Trisha Zorro let on Salty's panel 20th the 9th. Apparently not true. Okay. So we've seen a few accusations so you know, people can be accused of stuff when they may have not done anything and it can damage their reputation down the line. Okay, take in mind, this isn't my opinions. I'm just reading out what's here, okay? As you know, try and maintain balance, but at the moment, just reading this as it is stated, okay? Right, clear that off. 2021, second month, 21st day, Monday. Local driving along Pilot Valley Road to Wendover came across blonde girl about 20 years old. She had t t-shirt on, shorts and no shoes and was walking along Frosted Road. Lady stopped to ask to help her. She refused. Lady went to Wendover to buy goods and returned. On the way back, she asked a girl again if she needed help, and a girl asked to use her cell phone to phone her boyfriend. On the call, the girl said to her boyfriend that she shouldn't have gone with those guys. In brackets, mentioned by Ty Corbin. Um, on mm, No Thanks channel, 23rd of the 7th. Local grandmother named Aubrey, but looks after her own grandkids came across the woman Ty Corbin on mm, no thanks mentioned it 9th of the 7th possible predators or trafficking group in the area so like could this happen to multiple people if there's other people going missing or being hurt in some way physically psychologically this blonde girl may not be the only one there may have been more before and after and maybe Dylan somehow got caught up in it right so that's like one way of looking at it and isn't it weird walking along with no shoes just like chase venstra was i mean i guess with it being warm out there maybe that's why but 
the way it's been worded, they just didn't have shoes with them. So what, were they taken away? Weird, isn't it? Oh, here we go. This is one of the main ones. 2021, second or the 21st. It says, Brenner attacked someone with a lawn chair, which is Bivens, and had warrant of arrest for attempted murder. Mentioned by Chris on the mob crew, 17th the 9th. Kevin Bibbins, or Bivens, is the person who Brenner attacked with the lawn chair. Yeah, mentioned by Candice Cooley on Heavy D's channel, 17th the 10th. Kevin Bivens broke up. Kevin Bivens broke up the fight with Brenner. Uh, mentioned on Salty's channel, whichever day that is. Domestic at the farm between Tom, Jim. Tom and Jim. And Jim hit Tom with a lawn chair. Jim was on crutches at the time. And Kevin broke the fight up. Oh. Tom's girlfriend witnessed it. They were the only four there. Kurt mentioned on Salty's channel 24th to the 11th. This was obviously after Jim had his ankle broken. And that could be why that crutches at Brenner's burnt down trailer laying about because of um, Brenner's ankle injury from the past. Right, okay. So it was Tom that got hurt, not Bivens. But Candy's Cooley said it was Bivens that got hurt. Oh, here we go again. Dodgy information, switching and changing. 2021, 4th of the 23rd. Brenner has outstanding warrant of arrest. Chris on mob crew. Mentioned 18th of the 9th. Failed to appear in court. Mentioned by Doug on mm, no thanks, 24th the 9th. Oh, here's a long one. What was this, 2021? Local lady and husband had Polaris, the ATV. And a couple of four wheelers stolen about two years ago. Brackets. Michael Moore mentioned it on Tyler Fellas, 6th of December. Michael wasn't sure on date, so I take it as anonymous ladies' date. Quinton. Brackets. Chase repairs the ladies' two quads, then steals them. <laughs> oh, not again. <laughs> What's he doing? This is all he keeps doing. One was a big green one. Was about one year before Dylan goes missing. Chase also borrowed, used her car when she wasn't there and stole money out her car. Avila Doom is her YouTube name. In brackets, local anonymous lady on no thanks, 15th for the 7th. Chase repairs ladies two quads, then steals them. One was a big green one. Was about one year before Dylan goes missing. In brackets, mentioned by anonymous lady on Tyler Fellas, 24th December. Is this Lady Diddy? Once again, Kurt mentions to Salty on Salty, the 31st of December. Okay. Let's just scroll down a bit. Uh, is there any way to like put like a marker so we know where to stop? Do you know what I'm going to do? Because oh, there's still a lot to go. I'm going to stop at the 2022 mark okay because 2022 is where it becomes more relevant right and just for the sake of trying to keep things in order because i honestly think this could take a really long time to read out and due to storage timing and everything in between we, we've got to do things the correct way because it'll be very impractical i mean if you were the shack lady you could probably do it for like 10 hours right but that's it's just not for me okay so this could be like um a five part six ten part video series okay i don't know if i'll be able to do it every single day but fuck me there is a lot of information here and possible rumors too okay so we'll just get down to the bit where it says 2022, hopefully, okay? I am on the PC, so I'm limited with time as well. Uh, where are we now? I think it's there, isn't it? Oh, we read that one out, sorry. This one. 2021. Uh, Trisha Zora moved across from Lance and Kim, 8th of May 2021, 
Kim asked to pre-sign paperwork so they could claim $400 per month for volunteering community work at the fire department and food bank from October to August. Trisha wasn't given any food from the food bank and Lance and Kim took it. In brackets mentioned by Trisha Zora, letter on Salty's 20th of the 9th. Local firefighters are all volunteer work. Okay. Made by point made by Ellen on No Thanks 19 for the 7th. Dylan Berg shows Salty's firefighter truck across the road from him. Dylan Berg on Salty's to 23rd of the 8th. Lance later resigns as a volunteer firefighter. Point made by Lance on Earthworm Entertainment. Okay. Trisha Zora. Okay. And Kim asked to pre sign paperwork so they could claim money. Oh. Okay. Whatever. Okay. What's this one? 2021, the 6th. Robert Aviles moves to Montello and locals have a lot of problems with him stealing stuff. Mentioned by Ellenberg on mm, No Thanks, 19th the 7th. Okay, no, no surprise there. 2021, 6th of the 30th, Thursday. Robert Aviles puts his finger in vents and has them sliced. Ugh, why would you do that? Why'd Robert do that? Was he under the influence of drugs? Slicing his fingers. What, did he lose fingers? Or just like a little cut? That's, that's odd. Oh, you twat, why are you doing that to me? I hate it when it fucks up like that, you fucking prick. Oh, where are we at now? Well, somewhere here. I don't know why it jumps about. It really does annoy me, this. Right, so we're on that one. 2021, 7th of the... F yeah. Brenner, James Brenner, dated Becky, summer before Dylan went missing. Rob was driving around... I think that's Robert Aviles. Was driving around stalking Becky. And next minute, Brenner at Rob's with gun threatening him. So you see that back and forth. You do this, I'm going to do that back to you. It says, uh, she yelled out to Brenner to put the gun down. In brackets, Troy Wadsworth's neighbour's daughter on mm, No Thanks mentioned it, the 1st and the 9th. Jim pulled gun on Robert with silver gun wood handle. Robert riding around the block checking Becky. In brackets, point made by anonymous person on mm, no thanks, 15 for the 7th, not Mrs. Avales. Slash, Jim pulled gun on Robert with silver gun wood handle. Here we go. Robert riding around the block checking Becky. In brackets, Ty and Mrs. Avales on mm, no thanks. Rob pulled gun on Jim over Becky with black gun. It was a whole thing between Chase, Rob, Jim and Becky. Mentioned by Taylina Rigula and Zavgirl, 18th for the 7th. Sounds incorrect. Right, so I don't quite follow all that, but what I did see, the bit about the silver gun. Silver gun is owned by Brenner, but that silver gun has not been found yet. That's what Ty Corbin said. So is that possible association that that silver gun that's missing could have been used to take Dylan out? And because it's owned by Brenner, then it's likely Brenner that's responsible for the outcome. Okay, Just made me realise then. But I think in short, basically, you've got a lot going back and forth between the likes of Kurt, you've got Brenner kind of looking out for one another, I guess, because they, they become friends in a sense. But then you've got the wives and the ex-wives getting caught up with one another and other guys in between. And then uh, the back and forth with Brenner and Robert Avales. Chase Fenstra stealing people's vehicles and also saying he's going to help you and then takes away. So Chase like double crossing people, right? Benefiting out for himself. Avales, same thing, stealing stuff. Like working together or so, is it something like Avales and Chase versus Brenner and Kurt? 
tag teaming in a sense for different crimes possibly well wow. okay Chase's ex-wife died of an overdose in brackets made by Ta said by Taylina on Zav Girls channel 18 for the 7th Taylina sees Chase in Montello and he just found out his ex-wife died of an overdose. Kids had bruises, and Tracy later confirms Chase beat his kids. Chase had just met Dylan, and oldest son was needing work. Okay. Yeah, the oldest son. I assume the oldest son is the one that worked for Dylan, but Chase supposedly wasn't aware of Dylan, the way it's been worded from what I've heard. In brackets, Taylor and Wadsworth talked about that. Salties, the 10th of the 8th. So Chase had three kids with Heather then about one year ago. Before this, Chase had a good friend, Bob. Bob was hanging around Heather and was jealous, and Chase wanted to kill Bob. Mentioned by Chase's dad on mm, No Thanks, 4th of the 8th. Must have been going out with Tracy. He's seen like levels of jealousy, levels of trust issues. Resolving those issues with violence, crime. Yeah. Even some of the pettiest stuff, right? He's starting to see it. Right. How far? Oh, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Please, I want to get down to 2022. Oh, my God. Um, this one. Let me just click that one, just make sure I've not missed anything. 2021, the 7th. Bridger, Chase's son, works for Dylan during summer. During summer. Chase's dad. And Jim Terry on No Thanks Channel, 3rd of the 8th. Okay. So that confirms that. Bridger, Chase's son, working for Dylan. Yeah, that's the one what Candice Killy was referring to, that person. Then next... Bridger sees Dylan and Ed Harshberger get into a huge fight about something, but he didn't know what it was about. Mentioned by Doug on mm, No Thanks, 4th to 8th. Kurt and Taylina said Ed moved away two years ago. Can't be true if Ed was fighting with Dylan. Made by Quinton that point. Kurt says he was with Dylan when they were fighting. Mentioned by Kurt on Salty Channel, 3rd to the 12th. Okay, so Bridger sees Dylan and Ed Harshberger get into a huge fight. Yeah, it was said earlier that Ed Harshberger really liked Dylan, and yet they get into a big fight. What's that all about? Hmm. But, you know, even even when you're friends with someone or like someone, you still have arguments. It's just normal. That. So I don't know what the big fight, though, was. Uh, 2021, on the 7th, same day. Chase says he found out last year Kurt's a, I guess, groomer and child thing. And Kurt's been trying to frame him since. Mentioned by Tracy's text to Chase on Crime Time with Jess, 26th of the 8th. Should be more or less around this date of July if Chase is telling the truth. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we're seeing it Kurt having it in for Chase, Chase having it in maybe for Kurt, Brenner stepping in between to defend Kurt. So, that's what we're seeing back and forth, snapping. 2021, 7th of the 13th, Tuesday, Wendover LE find 100k worth of meth and heroin during a traffic stop. Oh, eat this, no, this is 2021. I was going to say, we saw we saw one to do with 2022 that year in review of Elko County, something to do with Wendover, but that was 2022, so forget what I said. And that was mentioned in the news, 14th of December 2021. Right, 2021, uh, Burning Man in Bonneville Salt Flats, 22nd August to the 7th of September. This Burning Man we may have seen ourselves when we were looking at the Google Earth map analysis 2019 imagery where we came across that giant fist in the ground, we came across that creepy guy with the black glasses in that bunny costume and not far away you had that like sandbag military like bunker 
with that metal monolith type object thing with a robot at the top and then further northeast you had maybe the burning man festival or something similar to that but in 2019 so that's like a little reference point there okay 2021 friday to saturday says dylan rounds gets put uh, th okay here we go 2021 the ninth and the third friday to saturday Dylan Rounds gets pulled over by police whilst on the way to the Blackfoot Idaho Fair and receives citation for having alcohol in the car and being underage for carrying alcohol. Dylan was with three of his friends, but Dylan was the driver and got citation. Kurt on Salty's channel, third of the 12th. So, yes, we have heard that, and we also heard it mentioned again in recent time, but Jim Terry can put it in the spin that or someone did, that Dylan was drunk, or they were all drunk, making it seem worse than it actually was, okay? What's this one? 2021, the 9th, the 5th, Sunday. Aaron Wadsworth gets arrested after a motorbike accident for 370 fentanyl pills, 6.4 ounces of meth and weed, 7, is that 75,000? So... Mm. looks like 75,000 bond and was released there's no comma in between so I'm not good when it comes to reading out figures um, what's this 2021 9th of December Tuesday Burning Man 2021 in Bonneville Salt Flats 22nd of August to the 7th of September okay um 2021 on the 10th Dylan and Brenna lived together for two months camping in Hazleton in a travel trailer together Dylan bought the truck early October to do potato deliveries and hired Brenna to be the driver Brenna was doing 10 loads a day and couldn't cope it got cold so Dylan hired two rooms in a motel Mentioned by Kurt Wadsworth on Salty's channels 19th for the 7th. Brenna and Dylan stayed together for three to four months in motel together in winter before moving to the farm. In brackets, Kurt Wadsworth on Salty's the 29th of the 8th. Okay, so the first bit where it said Dylan and Brenna moved to that camping spot in Hazleton in a travel trailer. I believe that what Candy's Cooley was referring to that basically Brenna and Dylan were at Candice Cooley's house, but like in the back garden in a trailer. Okay, and then fast forward, and then they moved on to a motel from the way it's worded here by the dates. Okay, and the bit where it says Brenna was doing 10 loads a day and couldn't cope, it's no surprise because of like Brenna, his age, his health, him maybe being a bit lazy, he couldn't keep up physically, I guess. And because it's been winter, cold, probably kind of rough and wearing on someone, right? Then, 2021, the 10th, Dylan was custom farming with Idaho Farmer on YouTube. Idaho Farmer met Jim Brenner and another farmer, Jim's size. Idaho Farmer is friends with Candice and her husband, as well as Larry Rounds. Dylan was doing potato spud farming, mentioned by Idaho Farmer on Salties, the 20th of the 9th. Okay. Mm hmm. So it's that one now, isn't it? 2021, the 10th. Dylan bought his boots from Hazleton with another farmer. Idaho farmer mentioned it on Salty's panel, 19th for the 9th. Boots later found by Grain Pile, Tuesday, after Dylan missing, and Brenna admits to tossing the boots by the dirt pile. So that's a point made by Quinton. Basically, he's fast forward it saying this is when the boots were bought and this is when they were found later on so that's just like skipping ahead so don't get too confused or not like that when he decides to jump around like a monkey my god why does it do that you little twat um okay just give me a second dylan was cousin farm i know dylan bought his boots um did we do that one okay here we go next one Dylan told Brenner he needs to do 20 loads per day, but Brenner was banging Becky. 
so he didn't perform at work. <laughs> and is the reason Dylan said he was lazy and didn't hire him for the farm. Jim felt like Dylan cheated him. In brackets, Kurt Wadsworth made that point on Salty's panel, 19th to 7th. Dylan and Brenner argued a bit, as Dylan never paid James fully because he was lazy and wasn't working properly. Point made by Taylina Rigolot on Salty's panel, 7th to 8th. So, although maybe money, true money wasn't uh, owed to someone like Brenner, maybe Brenner felt like he was owed more. Maybe it was a grudge with time. But it's one of those things where you're going to do half the work, you're going to receive half the money, but maybe Brenner feels a bit entitled. Well, he is a bit entitled. But the bit where it says Brenner was banging Becky's, and Becky was mentioned earlier on, right, wasn't she? Hmm. So basically, Brenner didn't perform well at work, but he did perform well when working with Becky in other means. Okay, I get the idea. Right. We're nearly there. Twenty twenty one, the eleventh. Don knew JD from when he was in Idaho at Grand's farm and had JD's number, mentioned by Kurt on Salty's channel. Twenty fourth, the eleventh. Okay, Don Haley. Okay, knew JD. Who is JD? JD is Dylan Round's friend. Okay. 2021, the 11th, Jim and Don brought grain truck to shop in winter and Justin Rounds overheard Jim being very jealous over Dylan. And that was mentioned on Heavy D's interview. Justin said that, 17th to the 10th, and we did look into that, right? Pardon me. You had Jim, you had Don taking it down to that shop and Justin had CCTV cameras with like some inbuilt mic. And that inbuilt mic picked it up and I think it was to do with uh, Jim saying oh how's Dylan handling his equipment and you know how he's using it oh you know criticizing him like saying oh I could do better do better right because I'm older and like I've got more experience or something so like levels of jealousy so we see levels of jealousy here we've seen levels of jealousy earlier on with ex-wives and wives and burglaries and getting screwed over so it's it's been a constant theme and pattern throughout. So anything that goes on, petty or big scale, there's a level of jealousy and there's a level of resistance backfiring afterwards. 2021, the 12th, this next point, Dylan and Brenner moved back to Lucen. I guess after all that custom farming. Okay, So they've been away for some time, but it's just how it works. 2021, the 12th. Jim Brenner beats up his neighbour, a guy named Billy, over a wood stove. Billy broke Jim's ankle and his foot was backwards. Don took Jim to hospital. Later, Jim got disability allowance and was thanking Billy. Jim got about $1,100 per month disability. Mentioned by Kurt Wadsworth on Salty's 19th to 7th. Brenner assaulted a guy at Montello Gas and Grocery. Ty mentioned it on mm, No Thanks 9th to 7th. Is this Billy? Kevin Bivins gives Jim rides everywhere when his leg was broken. Mentioned by Michael Moore and Tyler Feller, 14th to 7th. Right, so the way it's worded here, it looks like Brenner has had multiple ankle injuries. In the past, during that time of when the trailer blew up, and fast forward to 2021, a year or two on. So, technically, Brenner hasn't really been lucky. Though, to him, he made a positive out of a negative because he realised he's getting paid now due to Billy hurting him. So that explains what Candice was talking about, where um, Brenner's on disability allowance. So that ties in with that, at least. But, you know, Brenner's still assaulting people here and there, which doesn't help. And yet, Bivens gives Jim rides every day during the recovery. But I thought Bivens hated Brenner. Ah, oh, weird. Anyway. Um, what's this one? 2021, the 12th. It says, Ed Harshberger moved Brenner out to the grain shed as watchdog. Interesting. Ed was leasing property from John Sheldon. 
and Joseph Cecchio was wanting to buy it, mentioned by Kurt on Crime Time with Jess, 30 of the 6. Kurt was fighting with people and Ed Harshberger moved him to Dylan's farm to work and act as security, mentioned by Michael Moore on Tyler Fellas. Kurt sees Don picking Brenner up and moving his trailer, horse, etc. Kurt Wadsworth mentioned it on Salty's, 19th of the 7th. Brenner gets moved from Kurt to Grain Shed just before fall. Mentioned by Brookie on mm, No Thanks. Looks like Brenner is part of militia group with Kurt and basically being put there to watch Chase. Brenner is moved out there around the same time Chase moved to and was in the desert. It was almost seen like higher ups in command with this militia group, vigilante group, Kurt Brenner working together. Brenner, maybe the right hand man. So you see, even in the, the years beforehand, before Dylan existed, packs, allegiances, some kind of loyalty, well, some kind of loyalty, we'll say, was established. Uh, we've heard a bit about Ed Harshberger moving Brenner to the Grain Shed, watchdog. They say that he's. Um, what do you call it? Oh, camp, not camping. Um, oh, for some reason I just forgot the word. Silly me. What's this? Kurt was fighting with people and moved him to Dylan's farm. What? Moved. Kurt was fighting with people and moved him to Dylan's farm to work as security. I assume. What did it mean? I assume this still mean Brenner. Kurt sees Don picking Brenner up and moving his trailer. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, I was thinking of the word squatting earlier. I forgot to say that. Brenner gets moved from Kurt to Grain Shed just before fall. Right, so it's mainly just to do with the, the Grain Shed, as we've seen before. No point getting mixed up there. Oh, stop doing that. Why does it do it after like every second or so? Give me a second just to refind where we're at. Add move to the grain shed. Was it that one? Yeah, we've done that one. That one. Right, 2021, the 12th. Dylan goes to Rigby with snowmobiles on the back of his pickup. Pickup slid and he hit a pole with the front of his pickup. An emblem came off, made by point made by Taylina on Salty's panel 7th of the 8th. So when you see Dylan's pickup truck, such as the crime scene images, what we have seen of it, the Burgundy pickup truck, the Ford F-150, at the front the bumper is smashed in, dented inwards, and that's because of this incident that happened in 2021 on the 12th. Okay? 2021 the 12th. Kurt used to be friends with Chase for four months. In brackets, Kurt mentioned on Jim Terry's 15th of the 9th, around the time Kurt is friends with Chase. Okay. 2021, the 12th of the 8th, Wednesday. Um, Robert Aviles eluded police after they found stolen goods and meth in his vehicle. Burden of proof, 7 the 7th. Robert Aviles gets arrested in West Wendover after a burglary at a casino. Police chased Toyota pickup and then Rob ran on foot from police. Car was searched and they found an iPhone from a previous burglary. Various cell phones, tablets, stolen goods, bank cards and other items as well as possession of meth. Point made by Frankie Rose, True Crime Update, 7th of the 7th. Okay. Done it again. Is there any way? Could, does anyone know how to stop it from skipping? Because I'm, I'm only just cl clicking once. Right, what's this one? 2021, the 12th of the 25th, Saturday. Dylan got his gun for Christmas. Mentioned by Kurt Wadsworth on Salty's panel, 19th to 7th. I assume this gun is the one that went missing after Dylan went missing too. Okay, is this around the same time? Chase's dad gives him a 2006 Mazda, which ended up having a fuel pump problem. Mentioned by Chase's dad on mm, No Thanks, 4th to 8th. Chase's dad 
gives him. What? Is this talk about Chase's dad gives Dylan the Mazda, or Chase's dad gives Chase the Mazda? Because I have seen cars, like, like scrapped or just left abandoned at Chase's homestead when Kurt went down there months ago. What's this one? 2021, 12th for the 30th, first day. Aaron Wadsworth gets arrested for 590 fentanyl pills and 90 grams of meth. Uh, mentioned by East Idaho News. Aaron Wadsworth, while on bail, gets arrested for 590 fentanyl pills, 90 grams of meth, weed, alpramansamum pills, $4,000 in cash, while searching car found more drugs bringing total to um, 1,440 pills, scale more weed, two handguns, total bail now at 1135000 Damn. Anonymous letter on mm, no thanks seventh of the eighth. Okay, well, right. Okay, so the next one is twenty twenty two. I'm just gonna click it there. Uh, just give me a second. I need to write this down right now before I forget. You can talk in the chat. I know it's a lot to take in, and you know if you've just joined, you're probably gonna be confused. Okay. Maybe to some people, they already know this information or know parts of it. I've heard of bits and bobs throughout. I've also heard like the potential rumours, but this kind of really explains it more. Okay, I'm not saying everything here is like 100, 100, 100% confirmed, right? Remember, take in mind the keys higher up kind of explain the situation, okay? If, if you want to rewind the video look back at the key and then watch me read what we read out and then match it up with the color coding okay you can take it from there but what i'm going to note down yes it mentions the number as well so it's 95 it's important i write this down 95 2022 and it's to do with chase what's that chase when many mornings. I don't know what the time is at the moment. I didn't check. This might be a short video. I, I can't. I just, I just don't know. But I just don't want to fuck this up. Because it's important. So I'd rather play it safe for now. I'd rather break it down to be fair. I mean I could have done like. The early days. But I think. I think all the years before 2022, before Dylan really, you know, the whole thing kicked in. Yeah, I just think it works better. So where I've got the marker right now is where we're going to continue on from next time, okay? And we'll maybe work so far in up to the point where Dylan goes missing and then we'll do that as the second part. And then the third part can be post that going on after it, okay? I said, if you are confused or if you have any questions, it's understandable. You can list it down below, okay, and mention other points in between. I appreciate your patience because I don't normally do these style of videos. You know, you see me where they tend to be a bit more loose and stuff, but this is like quite full on with information. And I guess the other way to understand it. Everything that's mentioned here is kind of like been documented throughout time, mentioned on different panels, channels on YouTube, but it's all been collected together as one on here by Quinton. Okay. So you think about all those hours of live streams, the six, the ten hour ones, all put onto here. It's crazy. So I think we'll leave it as that for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.